right. All right, so welcome. Um, we're having a great turnout, it's amazing. A lot of people were very excited for Stephen's event. We were so excited to have Stephen today. Um, my name is Caitlin Shea, and I am the events and media director for Walt Whitman Birthplace. And in case you don't know, we're a museum that is located in Huntington, New York. We are right across the street from Walt Whitman Mall. Um, that's a big landmark um, on Walt Whitman Road. So obviously a lot of Whitman around us. Um, if you've never been with us for a tour before, now is the time to start planning for after this quarantine is over. Um, put it on that to-do list. I'm sure everyone's thinking of everything they wish they could do right now and are you know getting ready for that um and all right sorry one second having an issue with this. okay just want to make sure everyone's able to join while i'm talking so um today steven's mm -hmm. going to be doing a workshop and he's going to read some of his poetry with us we're so excited uh, i'm was so happy that steven agreed to be with us and volunteer his time today um and a, we've had a few poetry events and we're reaching new people um, outside of New York, um, outside of the country even, which has been incredible. It's not something that we ever could have predicted. Um, so sometimes out of chaos comes this opportunity for something new. So we're just very happy that that's been going on recently for us. Um, we also asked Stephen if he would donate 10% um, of his book sales today to us. And unfortunately, Stephen isn't able to access his bookmaking, um, his bookmaking materials, I'll say. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is for today, um, he's being kind enough to suggest that people donate um, on behalf of this event. And I'll put that link in the chat shortly. But as soon as his book is available again, and he's able to produce new books, we're gonna share that on all our social media and we're gonna share it in our email blast. So if you're not part of our email list yet, you should get on that. Um, so you would go to our website, you scroll down to the bottom and you can sign up and then all of the events that we have coming up uh, will be delivered to your inbox. And also our social media, we're constantly updating with uh, Whitman facts, with uh, quotes by Whitman that are really pretty that you can share things like that. So always be checking that out in your spare time because we all have a little spare time now at home. Um, all right, so I'm gonna introduce Stephen. I don't wanna go on too long about uh, the birthplace, but so Stephen has been so kind as to join us today. And um, I'm just gonna share with you, Stephen is one of my favorite performance poets. Um, he and I were just speaking about uh, a Huntington Arts Council program called Spark Boom that was around a few years ago. Unfortunately, they lost their funding, but um, we had a great time. I was a visual artist during one of the events and he performed during the event, his poetry. And it was so engaging. I remember we had a Santa hat on. Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's such a great experience. And we wanna do that too, similar to uh, Huntington Arts Council, just keep bringing people um, more entertainment, more arts, focus on local artists and broader artists um, that we're able to bring in. So all of our donations, things like that, going, go towards just bringing the community and you know the country at large together as much as possible. All right, without further ado, and please keep your microphones muted, I have to say that again. <laughs> um, please welcome Stephen. Spotlight for Stephen. All right, can everybody hear me okay? We're gonna. Can everybody just give me a little thumbs up? Good. It's all right, okay, good. Yeah, my, my sound is not great, so if it starts cutting out and I need to project, just let me know. Um, first of all, I just I just wanna say it's incredible to have all of you here. Gentle um, I'm really, really, I'm really gifted to be a part of this community and to be a part of uh, the, the larger community uh, poetry world out there. So it just means a lot that y'all are here to support this. Uh, I'm also wildly nervous just because I've never hosted really a workshop like this before. So um, we're all going to be kind of putzing our way through this together. And I, uh, I appreciate all of your support. So 
I want to give you guys as much time to write and to create as possible. So let's just get some logistics stuff out of the way. I wanted to start with just a uh, quick land acknowledgement. So I'm here in uh, on Chiska, Shawnee, and Cherokee occupied lands in Blue Ridge Mountains of Southwestern Virginia. Walt Whitman's birthplace is itself built on the Tinnecock occupied lands in Huntington, New York. And we recognize that indigenous peoples whose descendants remain among us are the rightful and sovereign stewards of these lands. I encourage you all to educate yourselves on the indigenous peoples native to the lands that you yourself occupy. So the workshop's gonna be about an hour. Um, we'll try and stick to that time at about an hour. We'll, we'll kind of, I'll just let you guys know like this, we're at time. And if you feel like you need to leave or you need to go off and take care of things, I encourage you to do that. Um, you know, please take care of yourself. At the end of the day, we just wanna make sure that y'all are, you know, in a good place. Um, I also recognize that some folks might, English might not be their first language. And so write in whatever language you feel most comfortable with, whatever you feel uh, best suits your flavor and your voice. Uh, I've tried to cater the writing to both poets and prose writers. So, you know, throughout the different prompts that we're going to have, um, you know, we'll, there's going to be three prompts and I'll share those in the chat in just a second. But again, use whatever writing style you prefer and however you're feeling in this moment. Um, so just a couple rules, you know, if, if, you know, if we're going to be sharing time out, I'm going to try and leave some time at the end of the workshop to hopefully have some, some sharing uh, as well as some Q&A. But please, no hate speech of any kind won't be tolerated. Um, you know, don't bring that energy into this space. Uh, this includes towards yourself. You know, avoid self-deprecation, self-hate. We want to be kind to ourselves just as much as we're kind to everybody else here uh, as they engage in their writing process. Um, if you have any questions or confusions, you know, you can put them in the chat. Myself and uh, Caitlin will try and answer them as best we can about the prompts and stuff like that. Um, again, there will be opportunities to share at the end of the workshop and like give each other energy, claps, snaps, uh, emojis, however, you know, however you want to express your, your support for one another. Um, and if you're going to, if, you know, there won't be any specific space for feedback, but if you feel like you want to like, you know, give folks feedback on, on what you liked about their work, point out what you found meaningful about the piece and what things stood out to you. And I wanna give credit to uh, Courtney Sermonek for helping me out with, with, with some of that. And then of course, the last part is we will be working together to create a shame-free and creative environment. Uh, we give each other permission to fail and we embrace the importance of play and the joy of confusion. So I wanted to just open with just a quick poem that kind of captures where I'm at right now. Uh, and it's called Dear Anxiety. Uh, several folks on, on the call today may be familiar with this, this poem. But again, if we're feeling anxious, we're feeling, you know, a little bit wild up, I just want to validate for all of us. That's okay. Let's create into that and with that. So this poem is called Dear Anxiety. You can't drive a knife into my heart by stabbing me in the back. I've been living off secrets and panic attacks, cuticles and paranoia biting the skin from my bottom lip, banana peels strewn across my path to keep my self-love bruised, begging. This David and Goliath match has set everything on fire, and neither of us is willing to let the smoke settle to see what's worth saving. Old friend, you have been living off cinder and kindling, yearning for the taste of kindness, the blood of your sibling. Perhaps the point is to forgive instead of kill to comfort instead of destroy. You know, I always thought you were a monster, but now I think you're just a boy who has never understood. Pinocchio was made of wood and his nose grew when he lied, but he wanted so desperately to be real. Maybe you were made of lies and you grow every time I tell myself that they are real. Thank you so much for allowing me to open with that poem today. Um, so I want to move into the first prompt. Um, I'm going to put the list of what we're going to be doing in the chat right now. So you all can just kind of see what's coming. Uh, but we're going to start with just a list, just making a, a list of what? Um, just a list of like the, uh, the thoughts that are associated or the feelings that are associated with when we think about our creative process. Some of the like the things we tell ourselves about what it means to be a writer, what it means to be a creative, um, you know, just just creating a list, however long or exhaustive as you'd like, of 
the phrases, words, or sentences that we tell ourselves about our writing or about our creativity, okay? So um, I'm gonna set a timer. We're gonna take two minutes for this, not too, not too long, but I, the idea being that the page will hold the anxieties or the insecurities or the thoughts that we might have about our creative process. And the last thing I'll say is that these thoughts, these sentences, these phrases are neither negative nor positive. They're neither good nor bad. They just are. So grab your notebooks or your, your uh, whatever devices you're gonna be used to be writing and our time will start now. Two minutes. just at the one minute mark. That is time. So we'll just leave those right there on the page and we'll head into sort of the next, the next uh, step in this. So we're going to look at um, a particular poem um, that uh, I kind of stumbled on recently and I found it, I think it's, I think it's, we'll, we'll just, we'll take a look at this particular poem and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll kind of read this along with this together. So this poem, can you all see the screen that I've just shared? Just give me a little like a thumbs up, we know. Okay, cool. So this poem, uh, it's Something to Believe in by Carl Phillips. Um, I chose this particular poem just because I think it combines both the prose and poetry, and it'll give us something to sort of uh, bounce off of. And so I'm just gonna read through this, and then we'll move into sort of our next prompt, okay? So this is Something to Believe in by Carl Phillips. Two hunting dogs have, my two hunting dogs have names, but I rarely use them. As I go, they go. I lead, they follow. The blue-eyed one first, then the one who's coloring, her coat, not her eyes. I sometimes call, never again, oh, never this way henceforth. Hope ambition. These are not their names, though the way they run might suggest otherwise. Like steam off night-soaked wooden fencing when the sun first hits it, they rise each morning at my command. Late in the Iliad, Priam, the king of Troy, predicts his own murder. Correctly, except it won't be by spear, as he imagines, but by sword thrust. He can see his corpse, sees the dogs he's fed and trained so patiently, pulling the corpse apart. After that, he says, when they're full, they'll lie in the doorway, they'll lap my blood. I say, why shouldn't they? Everywhere, the same people who mistake obedience for loyalty think somehow loyalty weighs more than hunger. 
when it doesn't. At night, when it's time for bed, we sleep together, the three of us, muscled animal, muscled animal, muscled animal. The dog settled to either side of me as if each were the slightly folded wing of a beast from fable, part power, part recognition. We breathe in a loose kind of unison. Our breathing ripples the way oblivion does, routinely across history's face. So I'm gonna leave this, this, this poem up if you wanna kind of pine it for inspiration, see if we can kind of position it so that the whole poem is there. Um, but so I wanted to give us a, just some time to free write about this idea of your choice. You can either take the idea of oblivion and kind of run with that, what that means to you or what um, like the connotations of it, uh, or you can run with this idea of something to believe in. I think those are two things which are sort of ironically an interplay. Your choice. Um, you can write a poem, you can write a dialogue, you can write a journal entry, a character, bio, however this idea of either oblivion or something to believe in sort of strikes you in this moment. And so we'll take five minutes for that. Okay. And again, give yourself the freedom or the kindness to just play. Allow yourself to go where you want to go. So your time starts now.
we're coming up on a minute. So um, whatever is, is, and that's a beautiful thing. It's just allowed to be. So um, we're going to go into our next, uh, next component of, of this. And uh, there's several different ways in which we could do this. Uh, we're going to do a blackout on, or, or an erasure poem. It doesn't have to be a poem, uh, but an erasure on what we've just written. So what you could do is you could take a picture of what you've just written if you're bold, and you can kind of start cutting things out or crossing things out. Um, or you can just kind of choose certain words or phrases and transpose them and pull them out and sort of construct something else from them. I'm going to give you an example of this. Um, this, is, this is an example just on my Facebook page, which was taken from a study where you just sort of cross out a whole bunch of stuff if you've never seen this before and you extrapolate, you ex excavate a, uh, another kind of poem from it. Now, um, you should, for prose as well as poetry writers, you should be able to do this. Um, if you have any trouble with it, you know, uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, but again, what we're focusing on is sort of the unapologetic killing of our little darlings, right? Um, and so kind of creating and then releasing. And so, yeah, we're going to do this on our, what we've sort of already just written. So taking what you just wrote and uh, erasing or pulling out certain phrases. Okay. Uh, so we're going to take five minutes for this as well. Is everybody clear on sort of this, this component? Okay, awesome. All right, so your time starts now.
want and raise the content. So again, release that. We're just playing, messing around with language, see what happens. So let's move into our sort of last, last drop. Okay. So um, folks might be familiar with the, uh, the Golden Shovel, which is a uh, poetry form that was developed by uh, uh, Terence Hayes, um, based on Gwendolyn Brooks' poem, uh, We Real Cool. And so I've just, I've taken the poem here to just show how it sort of works, where he took Gwendolyn Brooks' poem and used each word from the poem as the last word in each sentence or stanza of, of the poem. So you can see highlighted in black and underlined here, this is Gwendolyn Brooks' poem at the end here of Terence Hayes' larger poem. And so again, we've just created a blackout poem using the poem we wrote before. And so now we're going to see if we can build our own golden shovel using the blackout that we created from the poem that we created before. Um, so again, you know, for, for poets, you know, try and put it in uh, each sentence or stanza to be, uh, you know, that the words of the poem. Um, and then we will, uh, you know, then we'll go, go into it. Can everybody see the poem that I have up right now? No, okay. Okay, let me try and do that again, all right? Aha, I see, because I chose the wrong screen. There we go. Everybody okay? That's it. That's good. Got it. Awesome. Thank you so much. So yeah, sorry there. So again, you can see Terrence Hayes' poem here. Everything highlighted in black on the end there is Gwendolyn Brooks' poem. Be real cool. Be let um, So yeah, you're going to take this blackout that you just did and try and build a poem with the, the last out of the words that you just took. For prose writers, if you're writing in prose, maybe try and put it at the end of sentences, you know, um, or if it's dialogue, maybe end the character's dialogue in the end there, okay? And again, we're playing, right? We're kind of stretching our brain a little bit. And so it doesn't matter if it's good or bad or if it's successful or not, if we're just playing around with words, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna have uh, five minutes and, yeah, and then we'll kind of take the workshop from there, okay? Everybody clear? All right, awesome, thank you very much. So time starts now.
and we're coming up on a minute. So hopefully all that was a little bit challenging, a little bit playful, a little bit fun. Um, you know, we can talk a little bit about that uh, in a second. Uh, Caitlin asked me to just uh, share one more poem for y'all at the end. And so, um, you know, I've been, uh, you know, reflecting, reflecting a lot on, you know, the state of the world, as I'm sure a lot of us are. And so, um, you know, uh, I'm a therapist during the day. That's, that's what I do. I talk to folks. Uh, and so I was just reflecting on like, what power do I have in these sort of powerless times and was reflecting on that. And so I wrote this piece called, uh, do you have some time to talk? Uh, it was based on a prompt that uh, WNYC, which is a New York radio station uh, put out for Poetry Month. So I wanted to sort of end on this piece. So this is, do you have some time to talk? If a lax answer will somehow satisfy the patchwork of grief and fascination lining your stomach, assuage the mesh of anxiety wrought by weeks of uncertainty, then the answer is yes. Physicists say that there are two types of time. One that we measure on our wrists, marked with precious squiggles on hanging discs or digitized screens, the kind we use to read the moments in a life to divvy up the incomprehensible nothingness of an unproductive day. Call it retrofitted chaos. The other type is cosmic, a kind of wrinkled flesh made of math stretched over everything, space-time cradling all that matter that strangely does not matter. One of them has died, an early victim of COVID-19. Now another species mourns while, ironically, the planet is given time to breathe. And what can I do? Well, I can listen. Work the only magic the universe has given me. Press my ear to your heavy heart across light years bridged by video feeds that cannot feed our human need for connection. The spirits yearning for touch. We, the privileged few at least. I can offer my own solace to dine on. It's not much, but it might feed a family, a soul. I can console or offer respite, carry the weight of all that brain, overworked and unemployed, the pain of what it means to be alive, to survive or not. Please, let me hold it for a while. I have all the time in the world. So I appreciate all of you for being a part of this workshop, for coming out and listening to poetry and, and doing some writing and challenging yourselves. I hope you were kind to yourselves. Um, and we have about, you know, 15 minutes to do a Q&A. And maybe if folks want to want to share a couple things, we can we can do that too. So cool. Yeah, so you can go ahead and unmute yourselves now. <laughs> That's totally fine because you can talk with you. And I want to just post some links right now. Um, the first one is for Steven, his website and also his YouTube. Um, check out his performances, they're amazing. Gotta check that out. We posted a few on our Facebook recently. And 
Then we have some Zoom events uh, that are upcoming and also videos of our past Zoom events on our website. Um, you'll see a link to donate for us. And then you will also see a link for National Poetry Month with poets.org. Um, today was the last day of the month, but honestly, there's just so many good exercises, just like just how Stephen gave us these different ways of approaching writing. Um, there's just a bunch of good exercises on there as well. So you that link. All right, and don't forget to um, copy paste these links out of here because once the chat ends, then everything just sort of disappears. <laughs> We're in a different reality here on Zoom right now. But thank you so much, Stephen. That was amazing. And I learned a lot. Um, you know, I'm not a poet. I'm always telling people like these events, uh, it's important to go in with an open mind. You don't have to know everything before you come to these events. Um, and the way that you worked this workshop just sort of, you know, making everyone comfortable, making everyone feel like there's, you know, no shame environment, which there absolutely is here. We appreciate that so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, I, and I'll say too, again, like, please donate to the birthplace. The birthplace is a really powerful local organization. So if you can offer what you can. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't been able to get access to a lot of the materials for my uh, printed books, but there are, there is, there are eBooks available on, on my website. You can download a PDF version of the chat book um, as well. So there's also that. Yes. But I'm happy to take questions or, or hear thoughts. Or, question. Do you sign the books if people order them? Um, well, it's a digital, it's an ebook, so oh, it's I mean, I can kind of put my little signature on there if folks oh, okay. really want that digitized printed <laughs> signature, sure. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, see if there's any more questions. I have a question. Joey? Joey, hi. Hi, hi, Stephen. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, Stephen, I'm just to ask you to riff on this line from Whitman which seems to apply because I think in the midst of all this, we have these moments where you say, whoa, everything is kind of amazing still. Uh, so Whitman had this line, to be it all, what is better than that? He crossed out better and he put greater. So the line is, to be it all, what is greater than that? Yeah, I love that. Can you riff on that, Stephen, a little bit? Um, well, when you say riff, what do you what do you mean exactly? Just go off on it. Sure. Like uh, I mean, yeah. Well, what I will say is that uh, like the whole the whole point of the workshop to sort of start with externalizing the things that are going on inside of our head um, is, is is to kind of open a space of freedom to just be whatever, right? Like the poem we 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 you know we went through these sort of three like the four really writing processes and they just are. Right? I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves that the poem has to be good or has to make sense or, uh, you know, there are very few things in life that make sense, or at least that's been my experience. And so, like, I think just allowing ourselves to kind of, like, eat, every time we put a word on a page, it is, and that's enough. I mean, that's magic enough as far as I'm concerned. So, I think I, I, that's kind of what I hear in, in, in that phrase from Whitman. I've, I've never heard that before, but, I mean, uh, if he was in the room, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I get that. So, um, so I wanted to kind of folks to see that you can play with your own, your own words aren't sacred, right? They don't have to be like me, perfect. Like you can just kind of, you can take any poem that you've written and, and play around with it in this way. And I think I wanted to create a space where folks had the freedom and the safety to feel like they could do that. So um, I hope that was successful. And if it wasn't, that's fine. Just, we're having fun, right? So thank you for that, Joey. Um, I just want to thank you for a skillful, enjoyable, pleasurable, absolutely magnificent interactive experience. Um, the hard, one of the hardest things to do is make a palpable connection and to assuage any worries you have. This was so enjoyable and profoundly healing in the sense of being able to release and discharge all of the clutter that gets in the way before it can create. Um, this is just a comment, but of such gratitude for one of the most enjoyable, fruitful times I've had since this began five or six weeks ago. Uh, many, many thanks. Really magnificent. Thank you very, very much. Okay, to have them. Absolutely. That's exactly what it's meant to be. Thank you, Karen, for sharing that. 
upstairs. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts or expressions? Does anyone want to read their poem? Yeah, please. I would love to hear what y'all have kind of cooked up. Bravery? Uh, no. <laughs> I'll share. Am I on Over mute? Joy. I'm not on mute. Okay. This is one of the iterations, so. I'm going to put you on camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. You're okay with that. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't. Okay. Okay, <laughs> I didn't see myself for a second. Hi, I'm Barbara Joy, everyone. Hi, Barbara. Um, you're willing, open your mouth, you beautiful invention. Pressure, step forward, horse legs whipped, frothing glorious. Together, a new way of glory. All heart, hands, other hands in the frozen bucket of time. Kissed by the sun, let go. Beautiful. Wow. That's from just now. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I really enjoyed it. It was, I found it really fruitful. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, Stephen. Folks want to share? I'll, I'll read something. Is that okay? <laughs> yes. What's your, are you on video? Am I on video? I don't know. This is David Siller. Hi, everybody. Hey, David. People Hello. I know and don't know. Uh, and then I actually, I wanted to ask you a question, but I'll, I'll read the piece first. This is one of, one of the iterations. Oblivion is a hard reset. Wipe the board clean, smear chalk on your coat sleeve. You can't wipe it all. Mutter. Matter changes form. Mass, energy, oblivion, etymology, some mix of obligation and vision. But there, the rhyme. Oblivion and oblivious, obvious and oblivious. From oblivion, the obvious is born. Oh, that was great. Oh, thanks. Thanks. And then, um, the question I wanted to ask you is, um, you gave a couple of really good ideas for helping writers who are struggling with revision. I think about doing blackout stuff and then doing the golden shovel. Um, what are some of the other things you might suggest to people when they start embarking on their revisions, um, including ways or techniques to just get over that? The word is sacred and I can't change it kind of uh, uh, starting point. Yeah, um, I think, well, <laughs> one of the simplest things that I do because I can get so caught in my head is I'll just rewrite the whole poem. I'll just go like, what was this poem about? Okay, cool. And then I'll just like write something else. And then I'll kind of create a chimera maybe later on. Um, and sometimes that helps me go, oh, this weird turn of phrase actually makes way more sense than this weird turn of phrase that I have here. I don't really need that, you know? Um, so sometimes that's really helpful. I mean, if you want to, like some people, like being tactile helps too. Printing the page out and literally cutting that piece out and playing around with them, almost like Tetris is something that um, I've found can get really fun and funky if you want to make a mess. Um, you know, uh, I guess the last thing is, this is really something um, Courtney actually turned me on to recently, is this idea of embodied writing, which is like put your body into a different position, like write upside down or like write laying on the floor, whatever your mobility and your body type allows you to do safely, you know, um, and sometimes just being in a different space in a different position helps you to see things in a different light, you know. Um, so I think just getting silly, you know, is, is helpful is just, you know, engaging with that inner child and, um, and recognizing how weird words are, and like how funny language is. And, and I think that helps me to sometimes get out of the idea that like this, this is, this is my precious, I need to like hold on to this thing, you know, and, you know, I think that it's just kind of getting out of that. And so that interplay between like my, our words aren't sacred and we can emulate our own poems is something that's very free. At least in you my know, experience. You know, the, uh, 
revision is, is very important for any sort of professionalism even. I mean, as a professional artist, you, you constantly used to re, you, revising things. And so I bring that into my poetry as well. And I wanna make sure I'm always willing to revise because that word's not sacred, because that line's not sacred. If you're drawing, for instance, I tell my drawing students, most of what you put down is garbage. Be ready to erase it. Just be ready to erase your lines and put better ones in. And so it's, I apply the same thing to poetry. You just, you have to, you, nothing is sacred there. You just have to refine it and make it better and better, you know? Yeah. It's yeah, good to see you, Steve. It's good to see you. Yeah, thank you for, for joining in. I think I'll, 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 I'll add just a little bit to what you said. And I think that like, it depends a little bit on like where you're at. Like, am I looking at this poem in order to edit it, in order to put it in the New York Times? Yeah, probably gonna have to take a, like a lot of work. Like. Uh, like, is this something that is really beautiful that is for me and doesn't need to see the light of day? I think we all have poems that like, we're like, you know, we look at our documents like that shit, that shit, that shit, that shit. Okay, I'll share that one, you know, like, you know? Yeah. So like, I think some of, part of it's also like recognizing that the, what's garbage in one context is not always garbage in another context, you know, and, and have fun with that. Um, so, so yeah, I, but I totally agree with you. I think it, it depends on, editing is really important depending on what you want to do and in what space that, that poem or that book or that story or that script is, what context it's in. Sure, Even, no, no, like, a, so from a visual perspective, some things are just a doodle. Some things are a doodle and you put that doodle aside and say, maybe that's a full-fledged concept that can be see the light of day and maybe it's not. Same, uh, same concept, you know. I have a book full of doodles right in here. This is why I was not on, my video wasn't on, because I'm doodling. <laughs> Great. Thanks for doing with us. Stephen, can Matt read? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Are we on? Uh, one second. Okay. Gotcha. Hey, Stephen. Oh, thank you for the workshop. And um, I've been doing mostly revision lately. And so it was nice to write something new. So thank you for that. Um, I also think about revision. It's nice to have a junkyard. That way, you, if you're worried about losing something, you can just put it in the junkyard and um, having junkyard documents that you can always just keep pasting things to. So this was uh, something I wrote before as you guided us through the workshop. Earth is taking back the narrative. Lions sleep on roads whose builders were of a different hue than those calling the shots. Flags, guns, and theories had been of importance. The lion spill over a double yellow line meant to separate, or what humans call civility. The big cat sprawl, enjoy the unnatural coolness of cement cutting through savanna dusk. A continent away, jellyfish pump their pink gowns through abandoned canals. Then a whale breaching water, so much death had won, or so they thought. Beautiful. And I just want to mention that Terry and Matt are going to have events with us too. Um, Terry is next week, same time, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. And then Matt, the following week, a Thursday, also 6.30 p.m. It's perfect, you guys are here at the right time. <laughs> can promote. <laughs> Wonderful, and they're obviously, as you just heard, amazing poets as well, so you definitely wanna put those down on your calendars. The next two Thursdays, 6.30 p.m. Thank you, it was beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for the space. Yes, we're so happy to have that. We have amazing poets volunteer their time with us. I mean, we're just so lucky to have that right now. I just want to point out so much right. amazing work here. It's great. You must feel very proud. You should. I just want to point out that we're at 7.30, so if folks feel that they need to drop off, feel, feel free to do that. Um, you know, take, again, take care of yourselves, do what you need to do. Um, I'll hang out for a couple more minutes, about 10 more minutes or so. Oh, read. Okay, wait, hold um, on. Give me one second to spotlight you. Okay. Okay. All right. There we go. I'm actually in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And um, I typed this on my computer and I used um, 
strike through to um, black out my, um, and I, this was really helpful. Um, so, and I've, while you've been, um, while other people have been reading, I've been going back and um, striking out more words. So I'll read my third iteration. We are marching into oblivion. No more truth to our words. It's about how we look. We've lost touch with what's meaningful. Every time we pick up our pens, what we want to say won't come out at all. But instead, our mouths and our brains are running. We can't figure it out what silence is made of. There isn't enough ink. The most important word in our minds is I. We think we're getting somewhere, but we can't think any more than we can write. Everything has to be logical from Z to A, but it will never be complete. And I'm not done, but that's as far as I got during the workshop. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here. That was beautiful. Yeah. Other folks want to share? It's been such a success even, really. Inspiring everybody. <laughs> Y'all brought the energy. Anyone else comments? Brave enough to read? <laughs> <laughs> I'll read my what I, if I can read something. Yes, Mr. Green. Uh, Green. One second, Russ, let me get you on here. You see Russ at the birthplace all the time. Hey, how are you? Yes. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, mine's very short. Um, but this was, this was a really cool exercise. I, I haven't done this before. I've always heard of the golden shovel, and I've, I've never shoveled through it uh, until now. Thank you, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> um, OK. We risk stumbling upon the face there where our neurotic tendencies to fall upon a belief away. Incongruent waterfalls, they rest, rock, eyes, trees, protecting. That's it. Amazing. Russ Green is one of the most giving, kind uh, folks that I know, and he oh, runs, he's one half of the, um, um, uh, oh, uh, South Bay one, Sundays. One, thank you very much. South Bay Sundays <laughs> there, and uh, on, now it's digital with uh, Christine Rao, uh, and so, uh, yeah, he's just an amazing person, uh, and y'all should, if you don't know him, y'all should, should know him. equally amazing, Stephen, if not more. <laughs> The folks put their beautiful words and energy out there. You brought a lot of gifted people together today, Stephen, definitely. Oh, they're so talented, really. Anyone else mustering up the courage? No? Okay, I'll read mine. I was just about to say, Tony, he, he yeah. reads my mind. <laughs> there we go. Tony Palacano. And thank you, Stephen. This was, was awesome. I put that in the comments. <laughs> Oblivion. Sweet relish. Sweet, sweet pecan pie. Sweet, sweet oblivion. Sweeter than ignorance's bliss, sweeter than a dunce's crown, sweeter than the king's fat fingers stuffed into jeweled rings, sweeter than the worm to the morning bird's mouth, sweeter than springtime to frozen fields. I have walked, am I still there? You're here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have walked your road so many times, but never called you by your name. You're Not sure whose screen is sharing. Um, I don't. I don't. I was moving my arrow around. I might have. Maybe it was me. I don't know. Okay, hold on. It was completely by accident. If it was. Can you see mine? 
These are the kinds of things with Zoom, you never know. There's all surprises. Just one second. Um, Some, sometimes I go between group view and speaker view and maybe. Did it show mine? I did something. No. Do you I think you can the Zoom. turn it off? I don't think I can. Was mine seen? No. Okay, good. <laughs> It says iPad screen. I don't know who's on their iPad. I do not have an iPad. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So maybe it wasn't me. Maybe we're doing a blackout on this Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think, right. I think, I think we, in, we interrupted Tony there. Yes. Where is Sorry, Tony. Tony. How dare we? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can't find Tony's <laughs> video. Tony, wave to me if you see me. Like he might have got bumped off and not seeing his video. Oh my god. Oh, huh. Hi, Russ. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Who's saying hello to me? Jessica. From the Brentwood one. Oh, hey, oh hello. Hey. <laughs> All right. We lost Never a dull moment with Zoom, folks. So thank you for your patience. Um, yeah, so again, we're just about at, you know, 10 minutes after. Anybody else feel the want or desire to sort of share their, the magic that they've made? All right, I think we'll wrap it up there. Let's give a big round of applause to Stephen, though. He's amazing. Woo! Thank you all so much right. for That's making me. I just want to give him the opportunity to finish reading. Tony is muted. Tony, can you hear us? Yep, I'm back. OK. Hey. Good. Please, let's get him on your phone. All right, one second. Oh, yeah. I would, uh, He's my, back. Not one dead. Glad to finish, but you made it just in the right time. <laughs> Perfect. In the nick of time. Spotlight is yours. Oh no, no, I already read. You sure are you done? It didn't yeah. sound like you were done. Didn't we didn't. I think I was done. You I sure? went into oblivion. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Sweet oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more round of applause for Stephen, please. Great job. Thank you all so much. Thanks. Take care. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Um, donate to the birthplace. Yes, yes. donate to the birthplace. Thank you, Stephen. And um, join us next week, Thursday, 6.30 p.m. for Terry Must. She's another amazing performing poet. So definitely don't want to miss that. Um, and the following week, we have Matt Pasqua. Thursday again, 6.30. We have a little rhythm here going now. Um, and I'm going to post all those links one more time in the chat so you have a moment to take a look at them. This should be popping up now. Oh. It's never that simple with Zoom. Zoom, Zoom is a wonderful platform for awkward. <laughs> yes. It has just mastered the art of distilling awkward. Uh, there it is. There it is. Okay. I should yep. fit right in then. <laughs> screenshot works good. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Screenshot works too. Yeah, screenshot. And don't forget to follow Steven as well if you don't already. Yes. And as always, it's uh, been you know, grand. I'm I it's been grand, I Stephen and everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you cool. for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you so much. Thank you.